Now that you have a solid understanding of the different types of joins and how they work, we can finally look over how to manage messier and more complex datasets. In the real world, joining datasets from different types of sources often require a bit of thought and cleaning ahead of time. With that being said, let's dive right in. Now on your screen, you're going to see our learning objectives for this lesson. If you like, you can pause and read through them, but as always, we're going to go over them at the end. Before getting started, let's first load in the packages needed for this lesson. So along with Pac-Man, or well, using Pac-Man, we're going to load in Tidyverse and Country Code. Let's first look at some pre-joined data cleaning and address some data inconsistencies. Now, oftentimes you will need to pre-clean your data when you draw it from different sources before you're able to join it. And this is because there can be inconsistencies in ways that values are recorded in different tables, such as spelling errors, differences in capitalization, and extra spaces. Now, in order to join values, we need them to match perfectly in R. If there are any differences, R will consider them to be different values. Now, to illustrate this, let's return to our mock patient data from the first lesson of joining. So if you recall, we had two data frames, one called demographic and the other called test info. Now, we can recreate these data sets, but we're simply going to change Alice starting with an uppercase A to Alice starting with a lowercase A and keep all the other values the same. Now, let's try a left join and inner join on our two data sets. So if you recall the syntax from the previous lesson, we're first going to indicate our first data set, which will be demographic our right data set, which will be test info. And we're also going to include the by argument, which is going to indicate which key column to join these two data sets by. In this case, we're going to put name. Now for our inner join, I'm just going to copy and paste the same syntax here. And when we run these two data sets, or I'm sorry, when we run these two code chunks for the joining of the data sets, we can see that R doesn't recognize Alice as the same person, and it could also not match Charlie. And so in the left join, as seen here, Alice and Charlie are left with an A's. And in the inner join, they are completely dropped. So all we're left with is Bob. So how can we fix this? Well, we need to ensure that the names in both data sets are in title case with a capitalized first letter. Now for this, we can use the string to title function. And so let's try it and see how it works in action. Within the code chunk, you see that in the mutate function, we're going to indicate the string to title function. And here, we're just gonna write name which is the name of the column in the data set. So name, name is the name of the column in the data set. And what this function does is it's going to convert all the entries in this column into title case, AKA it's going to capitalize the first letter of each entry. So once we do that, and let's also view the set we can now see that the name Alice has once again been converted to begin with an uppercase letter. And with the corrected title case, we can retry our left and inner joins. Now I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste the code that we indicated up above in the code chunks for our left and inner join. So once again, demographic is our X argument, test title, test info title is our second argument. So this is the first data frame. This is the second data frame. And the by argument name indicates the key column wherein 
the two data frames will be joined by. So when we run both of these code chunks, we can now see that worked perfectly. There are no longer any NA values nor any values that were dropped from either data frames. Now we won't go in too much detail about all the different functions we can use to modify strings, like the string to title function we just used. But the important part to remember in this lesson is that we're going to learn how to identify mismatch values between data frames. For now, it's time for some practice. The following data sets you see on your screen contain data for India, Indonesia, and the Philippines. However, an inner join of these data sets produces no output. Now please identify the differences between the values in the key columns that would have to be changed before joining the data sets. Take a second, think about it, and indicate your answer in your own RMD file. Let's now look at some key typos using real data examples. Now in the small data sets such as our Mac data above, it's quite easy to notice the differences between values in our key columns. But what if we have much bigger data sets? Well, to illustrate this, let's take a look at two real world data sets on TB in India. Our first data set on TB notifications in 2022 for all 36 Indian states and union territories which was taken from the Government of India Tuberculosis Report, and it can be accessed within this hyperlink here. So let's first load in our data set with this line of code. And we see that we have 72 rows with three columns. For some specifics, let's directly look at our data frame. Now we see that the following variables we have or columns are state, HC type, and the TB notif count. Well, for our learning purposes, we only want public systems for now. So to do this, we're going to filter out for HC type or healthcare type in this case, and we're going to drop that specific column. So when we run this code chunk, we see that now we only have two columns, which are state and TB notif count because we dropped HC type. And our second data set is on COVID screening among TB cases for 36 Indian states taken from the same TB report. Once again, it can be accessed in this hyperlink here, which is also accessible on your lesson notes. So if we once again run this line, we see that we have Again, 72 rows with three columns. If we look at the specific data set, we also have um, healthcare type or HC type, which we would like to drop. So this it's the same syntax, HC type. And we're just gonna want public systems and we're gonna drop the HC type column. So once we run this code chunk, um, you're going to see that the HC type has now been dropped. Now it simply contains the state or union territory name and the number of TB patients who tested positive for COVID-19, indicated in the TB COVID positive variable. Note that there are some missing values in this data set. We're not gonna go over all of it, However, if you'd like to pause and um, do some exploration on your own, please feel free to do so. But for now, we'd like to join these two data sets together to allow us to calculate the percentage of TB patients in each state who tested positive for COVID-19. Now, let's give this a go using the inner join function that we learned in the previous lecture. So within our inner join function, we're going to indicate the TB notifs public data set is our first argument, and our second argument or second data frame is going to be the COVID screening public one. And now when we run this code chunk, we can see that the joining was indeed successful in that we now have a TB notif count and a TB COVID positive count within the same data set 
for each state in India. Now, since we have this information, we can finally perform the percentage calculation. So to do that, within the mutate function, we're going to create a new variable and calculate the percentage by dividing TB COVID positive by the TB notif count and multiplying that by 100. Now, when we run that code chunk, you can see that we've successfully created a new column, which indicates the percent COVID positive for each Indian state based on the TB notif count and COVID positive count. Now, upon an initial observation, this data frame seems all right. However, notice now that we only have 32 rows in the output data set, even though both initial data sets had 36 rows, as we can see up above here and also here. Now, whenever you lose data this way, it is worth investigating. Now, in our case, it turns out that there are several regions spelled differently between the two data sets. And now because of these key typos, some elements of the data set could not be joined and were therefore dropped. For example, one data set lists New Delhi while the other simply lists it as Delhi. Well, with such a large data set, how can we identify these to avoid information loss? One of the key concerns we brought up is identifying key typos in our data. Well, to identify these key typos, we can compare which values are in one data frame but not the other using the set diff function. Now to see the set diff function in action, let's start by comparing the state values from the two data frames we loaded up above, which were TB notifs public and COVID screening public. So within the set diff function, we're going to input two arguments. The first argument is going to be our TB notifs public data set and we're going to specify the state column. And the second argument is going to be our COVID screening public data set, wherein once again, we're going to specify the state column. And if we run this code chunk, we have the following output. So by putting the TB notifs public data set first, we are basically asking R which values are in the TB notifs public data set, but not in the COVID screening public data set. Well, we should also switch the order of the data set to check the reverse, asking which values are in the COVID screening public data set, but not in the TB notifs public data set. So let's do this um, by inputting in this data frame the COVID screening public data set first, specifying state, and the inverse, TB notifs public, specifying the state once again. And we can compare the two lists. So as we see here, there are four values within the COVID screening public data set that have spelling errors or are written differently than in the TB notifs public data set. Now, in this case, the easiest thing to do would be to clean our COVID screening public data set using the case when function to have our two data frames match. Let's clean up the COVID screening public data set and then compare our data sets once again. So within the case when function, we're going to indicate the state variable and we're going to input the spelling with in the COVID screening public data set. Oh. And we're going to now set it equal to the spelling from the TB notifs data set. And we're going to do that for all of the state names that we have. Now we can run this little part of the code chunk and then we can rerun our set different functions with the new cleaned data set. So for the interest of time, I'm just going to simply copy and paste from the code we indicated above. But now I'm going to indicate the COVID clean data set. Make sure to do that if you're copy and pasting. Make sure that you're using the correct 
and cleaned versions of the data set for your analyses. If we run the code chunk, you can see that now we have no more differences in the region names in either way that you input the data frames. And we can also perform our join without unnecessary data loss as what happened before. So with once again trying an inner join, we can put TB Notifs public as our first argument or first data set and the COVID screening public clean as our second argument. And once we join that, we can see that all 36 rows have been retained, there have been no dropped rows, and our join was successful. Apart from the set diff function that we just went over, the anti-join function from the deep layer package is another great way to identify discrepancies in key columns before joining two data frames together. And the key difference between the set diff and anti-join functions is that the anti-join function returns all rows from the first data frame where key values don't match in the second data frame. So to see the anti-join function in action, let's try to find unmatched state values in the TB Notifs public data set compared with the COVID screening public data set. So within the anti-join function, we'll first input the TB Notifs data set as our first argument. And we would like to check it against the COVID screening data set, which we'll put as our second argument in this case. And from here, you can now see for these following states, these values are not matched in the second data frame. And in our case, the second data frame is the COVID screening public data set. So this indicates that these state values are in TB Notifs public, but not in COVID screening public data set. And we can also find the inverse, or we can find the state values that are in COVID screening public data set, but not in the TB Notifs data set. And to do that, it's simple. We simply invert the order of our data frame arguments. So instead of TB being first, now it's COVID followed by TB. And again, when we run this, we find the state values that are in the COVID screening public data set, these values right here, but not in the TB Notifs data set. And as you may have noticed, this method, this anti-join method, returns entire rows where discrepancies occur and provides more context about the state or your variable, potentially making it more easier to diagnose and fix issues. And now you can compare this with the set diff function up above, where it simply tells you the states that are different between the two data sets. However, it doesn't give you more context as in the actual accounts that are missing, as we can see here with the anti-join function. And now after identifying these discrepancies between the two, we can again fix the error with the mutate function and proceed with the join. If you like, you can try that out on your own, but for now it's time for a little practice. So we would like you to check and fix typos before joining. So this following data set, which was also taken from the same TB report that we've cited above, contains information on a number of pediatric TB cases and the number of pediatric patients initiated on treatment. So keeping that in mind, we would like you to use set diff or anti-join to compare key values from the following data frame with those from the TB Notifs public data frame, which we previously defined. And with that, we would like you to make necessary changes to the child public data frame to ensure that the values match, join the two data sets, and lastly, identify which two regions have the highest proportion of TB cases in children. With that being said, take a moment to pause and read over the question and indicate your answer on your own RMD file.
In the previous example, we saw how key typos, both spelling and formatting inconsistencies, can prevent successful joins between datasets. Now, let's delve into a slightly more complex scenario using the COVID screening public dataset, which has 36 entries, as we can see. And we want to enhance this data set with zoning information available in another data set, which we'll refer to as the regions data set, which when we run this chunk, we see contains 32 entries. Now, upon closer observation of the regions data set, we can see that columns include zonal council, subdivision category, and state UT, which correspond to the zonal council designations, subdivision, and the names of states and or union territories. Now, keeping this in mind, we would now like to merge the zoning information without losing rows from our original COVID screening public data set. So in order to do this, we'll opt for a left join. And since we want to conserve rows from the COVID screening public data set, we're going to indicate this as our first argument within the left join function. And in the second argument, we're going to put our regions data set. And we're going to join them by state. And we're going to put that equal to state UT in the second column. And here, after performing the left join, we can observe that seven entries lack zoning information. So here we see one, two, three, four easily. But to confirm, we can also use the filter function with the is and a argument. And here we see more easily the seven rows that are lacking zoning information. Now, to understand why, we can investigate the discrepancies using the anti-join function that we just learned. So first, we'll check which states are present within the regions dataset, but not in the COVID screening public dataset, by state. So we're going to indicate state UT here, because that's what it's called in the first argument, and state here because that's what it's called in the second argument. So this operation reveals to us that the following three states are present within the regions data set, but not in the COVID screening public data set. And we can also check the opposite. We can use the anti-join and simply invert the order of the data sets we indicate in our function. So regions here. And we'll say state equals state UT. And alternatively, we see here that there are seven states in the COVID screening public data set that are not matched in the regions data set. So upon closer inspection of both functions, we can see that only three of these mismatches are due to key typos. And the remaining four states, there are four other states um, that are simply absent from the regions data set itself. So to address these typos, we can apply similar corrections to those we did in a previous example with the mutate function. With mutate in case when, we can compare the spelling discrepancies between these two data sets and indicate them within the case when function. So I've already pre-done that. So if you would like, you can pause your screen and figure out which spelling corresponds with which. However, I've already done this in the code chunk below. And once we apply this, these fixes, we can perform another left join. So with our COVID regions join fixed, our left join, we want to preserve the COVID screening public fixed data set. We're gonna apply that to regions. 
by state. And now we can do a subsequent check for missing zoning information with the filter function. So with that, a subsequent check that we just did confirms that the only four entries remain without zoning information. And as we said before, these four regions were not included in the regions data set. In the regions data set here, as we see, there are four more within the COVID screening compared with the regions data set. And so because of these four regions that were missing in the regions data set, there's no further action we can take at this time. So overall, the main takeaway is that this example highlights the challenge of ensuring that no data is lost during joins, which can become increasingly complex with larger data sets. So to handle such issues, we can employ strategies such as manual data inspection and correction or fuzzy matching for imperfect string comparisons. And you can do this with tools like the fuzzy join package in R. Now we won't get into the fuzzy join package in this lesson, but we do encourage you to find out more information on your own. Now comes the opportunity for some practice. This particular question is quite long with detailed instructions. So we advise you to pause your screen in order to read carefully and fully understand what is being asked before writing your answer in your own RMD file. So take a moment, pause and answer. So far in the lesson, we've primarily looked at one-to-one -one joins where an observation in one data frame corresponded to only one observation in the other data frame. Now in a one-to-many join, an observation in one data frame corresponds to multiple observations in the other data frame as we can see illustrated in this figure below. But to illustrate a one-to-many join, in a more fleshed out context, let's return to our patients and their COVID test data that we previously saw earlier on. So let's imagine that Alice and Xavier got tested multiple times for COVID. Now we can add two or more rows to our test info data frame um, that we saw previously with the new test information like so we see in this code chunk here. Next, we can take a look at what happens when we use a left join with demographic as the data set to the left of the call. So within our left join function, we're going to input demographic as the first argument and the test info many data set as our second argument. And so we get the resulting output. So it's not so clear what happened with this function. In order to fully understand what happened in our left join, we can review this GIF that is playing underneath. So what happened was that Alice was retained in the final data set, but because she was featured twice in the data set you see in the right, her demographic information was duplicated in the final data set. Xavier was dropped completely. So you're gonna see Xavier disappear. And so to keep in mind, when performing a one-to-many join, the data from the one side is duplicated for each matching row of the many side. At this moment, let's take a break and use the opportunity to practice. Pause your screen, understand the question, and then answer. Now we can apply this concept to some real world data set. The first data set that we'll work with is the TB Notifs data set, which looks like this. Note that this is a long formatted data set with two rows per state, one row for notifications from public health facilities in the state, and one row for notifications from private health facilities. And the second data set we'll use is an Indian regions data set, which can be seen here. 
Now, utilizing those two real world data sets, we can try joining with a left join function. And from here, when we run that, as expected, we see that data from the regions data frame was duplicated for every matching value of the TB notifs data frame. Now it's time for some practice. Read the following question on your screen, pause, and then answer on your own RMD script. Now, sometimes we have more than one column that uniquely identifies the observations that we want to match on. For example, let's imagine that we have the systolic blood pressure measurements for three patients, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, before, pre, and after, post, taking a new blood pressure drug. Accompanying these blood pressure measurements, we have another data set with the same three patients, Alice, Bob, and Charlie, once again, but this time with their creatinine levels before and after taking the blood pressure drug. Now, as a small little side note, creatinine is a waste product that is normally processed by the kidneys, and high creatinine levels may indicate a side effect of the drug that's being tested in this case. Now, if we want to join the two data sets so that each patient has two rows, one row for their levels before the drug and one for the levels after taking the drug, we can do this with a left join. When we do this, our first instinct may be to join the patients by name. So within our left join function, keeping in mind that we're piping, kidney is our second argument. And we want to join the data sets, as we said, by name because it is instinctual. So when we do that, and we view the data set, we get the following result. And as we can see, this isn't what we wanted at all. We end up with duplicated rows. Now we have four rows for each person. And R actually gave us a warning message that you saw earlier in your screen that this is considered a many-to-many -many relationship because multiple rows in one data frame correspond to multiple rows in another data frame. So as a general rule, you should always avoid many-to-many -many joins whenever possible. Also note that since we have two columns called time point in each data frame, these columns in the new data frame are differentiated by point X and point Y. Now, what we want to do is match on both name and time point to avoid this mess that was created here. So to do this, we have to specify to R that there are two columns to match on. So in reality, this is very simple. All we have to do is use the C function or create vector function and specify both column names. So once again, within our left join function, keeping in mind that we're piping, kidney is the second argument in this case because we're piping. And we just want to specify that we are going to match on two columns, which in this case will be name, and the other is time point. So let's do that. And when we investigate the resulting data frame, we see that it looks great. Each patient has one entry for pre and post-op, which includes their systolic pressure and their creatinine levels at the time that they took the drugs. So this looks great. Now that we saw that concept using our mock data frame, we can apply this to our real world TB notifs and COVID screening data sets. So if we run this, we get the following outputs. You can take the time to explore the data sets if you like, but we've more or less worked on this throughout the lesson. Moving forward, let's think about how we want our final data frame to look. So ideally, we would want to have two rows for each state, one with a TB notification and COVID data for the public sector, and one with a TB notification and COVID data for the private sector. So that means we have to match on both state and HC type, so healthcare type 
using, once again, the C function and the by statement. So just as we did for the patient data, we have to specify both key values in the by statement using the C function. So within this, we want to match by state and HC type, as we said. So once that's specified, we can see that the resulting data frame is exactly what we wanted. We have indeed two rows for each state, one for public and another one for private sector data. Now that you've learned about multiple key columns, it's time for a little practice. Read the following question on your screen, pause, take your time, and answer. And that actually brings us to the end of our lesson. At this point in time, let's take the opportunity to go over the learning objectives that were introduced in the beginning of the lesson. So by now, you should know how to check for mismatched values between data frames. You should also understand how to join using a one-to-many match. And finally, you know how to join on multiple key columns. So to briefly summarize, we delved into the intricacies of data cleaning before a join with a focus on how to detect and correct mismatches or inconsistencies in key columns. We also highlighted the impact of one to many relationships in joining data frames, specifically in showing how data from the one side is duplicated for each matching row on the many side. Finally, we demonstrated how to join data frames using multiple key columns. And now as we conclude this lesson, we truly hope that you've gained a deeper understanding of the importance and utility of joining data frames in R. For now, that's it, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Mm -hmm.